It is long past time. We have a $15 federal minimum wage. We need to raise the minimum wage to at least $15 an hour. We have got to raise that minimum wage to $15 an hour. A, a minimum wage that is a living wage, winning that fight for 15 all right, 2020 Democrats ramping up the fight for $15 an hour as House Democrats pass a bill to raise the federal minimum wage. Our next guest blasting this is bad economics. In a new video that's gone viral, here to talk more about it and to lay it out, Republican Congressman Dan Crenshaw. Congressman, you're astounded at this push out of the House for $15 minimum wage because no one's seeing around the corner. What bothers you about it? Well, it's shallow thinking. You know, it's ill-conceived policy. It feels good. It's emotionally driven, but it doesn't actually do any good. And they're not thinking of the second, third order consequences of a $15 minimum wage. And, and you know, this has been debunked over and over and over again by economists. Okay, it's bad for economics, and it's also bad because it's a one-size-fits-all policy from the federal level. Economically speaking, it causes job loss. The CBO estimates that up to 3.7 million jobs, 3.7 million jobs, would be lost under this kind of bill. And, and it's not hard to understand why. When a business is faced with a new minimum wage, well, their, their entire budget for salaries and payroll doesn't, it doesn't change. So they have to make changes themselves. They might have to cut hours and they might have to fire people. So while some people get a small incremental uh, increase, others get a 100% decrease in their wage because that's what happens when you fire them. The other thing you have to think about is, why are we doing this from the federal level? Yep. Costs of living are vastly different across the country. In San Francisco, rent is about $4,500 a month. In Lubbock, Texas, it's about $700 a month. Okay, you don't have the same minimum wage in both places. You need to allow municipalities and counties to make that decision for themselves. But now you're in the political world, Dan. You're not in the practical world. And if you could be part of telling uh, people I'm make, giving you more money, uh, that's what you care about. But business owners should speak up. They should get together and understand they're not being selfish. They're trying to survive. And if they survive, more people are employed. Meanwhile, the man who's behind the $15 minimum wage, Bernie Sanders, yeah. For example, in case you forgot, here's Bernie being Bernie. Raise the minimum wage to a living wage. Raise that minimum wage to $15 an hour. We should raise the minimum wage. And guess what? Bernie Sanders, you know, the socialist who happens to be, it turns out he's a millionaire. It turns out he's not yeah. even paying his staff minimum wage. This is according yeah. to the Des Moines no, Register. The part. Yeah, he has now adjusted. He's going to give them $15, but cut back his hours for his people. Cut Here it is, the, the quote. Hours. Sanders yeah. said field organizers who are the lowest ranking members of the presidential campaign and typically in their 20s, making 36000 a year with 100% employee paid health care, as well as paid vacation sick leave for staffers working 40 hours a week. That comes out to $17 an hour, but 40-hour work weeks on presidential campaigns are rare. So Sanders said the campaign will limit the number of hours staffers work to 42 or 43 each week to ensure they're making an equivalent $15 an hour. He just said exactly what you said. Right. You know, it's uh, you got to laugh at this a little bit. I mean, when, when this kind of poetic justice where this ill-conceived policy gets manifested right before your very eyes. And, and I wonder who could have predicted this. Well, anybody with an economics degree would have predicted this. So it doesn't help the people you're trying to help. In some cases, it hurts them because, remember, a lot of these people at a minimum wage are adding to their household income. And if they're priced out of the labor market, they can no longer add that income to their household. So a household that was not in poverty could potentially be in poverty. And they've studied this at the CBO as well. It's really, it's really, really bad policy overall. It's like when Obamacare says if you have a certain amount of employees, you have to give health care. Well, certain companies can't afford it, so they want one person underneath the threshold. Right. They don't understand exactly. businesses it's, it's will adjust. So I got to bring it to something else. As you know, the squad uh, works where you work in the House, just on the other side of the aisle, and sometimes even separate from Democratic leadership. Okay, most of, most of the time. Listen to the latest call for action from Alexander Ocasio-Cortez when it comes to what's going on at the border. We cannot allow this administration to define immigration policy for the United States. But this is something that I think is going to have to take a 9-11 style commission. They were charged with investigating and making sure they dug up every nook and cranny of what happened and how it happened in our system. So she wants a 9-11 style investigation of things at the border. All they have to do is look at the House and Senate and find out why the asylum laws haven't been changed. But your witness, do you want this investigation? 
No, listen, the, the reason they want something like this is to add fuel to the fire. Okay, they want to keep this in the news. Notice that they never come up with a solution. Never. When they talk about the overcrowded facilities, they never have a solution. They don't have a solution for our immigration system. They say it's they say it shouldn't be defined by the administration. Well, we do have laws right now. Okay, uh, thirteen code 1325 that says you can't illegally cross the border. That's immigration policy set by Congress. It's a law in place. We need to enforce it. So the fact that, you know, the administration is not making this up as they go. They actually are following the laws. And but what they don't want is solutions. What they really want is more commissions like this, more investigations that they can point to and call the president evil. That's I guess, what they want. I, the president said Senator Schumer, he was encouraged that Senator Schumer saw bad things were at the border. He wants a meeting and maybe get Congress to act. What's the reality, being that you're going on vacation in a couple of days? Well, I, I can't say that I'm hopeful because I, I, I'm worried that the Democrats like this crisis too much. I am worried, uh, as I've seen them fight against every single, even the smallest measures to help fix our immigration problem, they fight against. Right? They don't want walls. They don't want fixed to the asylum loopholes. Uh, they're talking about decriminalizing illegal border crossings. I had an amendment the other day that would have just collected data on crimes in sanctuary cities. They said no to that. I'm like, wow, we, 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 can't, we can't build physical barriers. Uh, we can't do internal enforcement. They get mad when we try to deport criminals. And we can't collect data. If that's not open borders, I really don't know what it is, and I don't like accusing people of wanting open borders, but that does seem to be the debate that we're having. Uh, Congressman, it's pretty clear. Uh, your mission, if you want the power to do the things you're saying, is to get back the House, and it's going to be a matter of organ organization and underlying policy and see what America chooses. Congressman Dan Crenshaw, thanks so much. Yeah, great to be with you. You got it.